Welcome back, you beautiful people, and today I'm going to teach you to do that. Do no for can. Ah, let's go. Right, the no foot can is a bit of an intermediate trick because you're getting your legs off your bike, you're throwing it to one side, but it's a fun trick and it's cool to learn. But before you start doing all that, you've got to make sure you're super comfortable jumping a jump, getting a little bit of air because you're going to have to have the time to get your legs over your bike and back on your bike so you can land safely. Also, you've got to be super comfortable with doing big no footers. So getting your feet to float off the pedals, let them flail about a little bit and then come back and land safely as well. Also, and another thing to take into consideration is the jump. You can actually do this on a little fly out, but it's not going to give you enough air time to let your legs come over a little bit comfortably to do the no foot can and then land back on the bike. I'm going to choose this little jump right here. It's a slightly it's a slight step up, but it's going to give me enough time for me to get my legs over my bike, do the no foot can, perfect that trick, and then land back on my bike and get out safely. But technique-wise, you can learn all of this on the flat ground. So let's let's move on to that bit. Ha ha ha! Little bit of flat ground. This is going to be perfect to hone in those skills of the no foot can. You can do this anywhere, on your driveway, an abandoned tennis court or runway, whatever. As long as it's flat, you can learn how to do this. But this is going to help you understand what it feels like to get your legs over your bike and to get back onto your pedals safely. So, what you want to do is start off with the no foot because that's a basic one. You're going to learn how to do the no foot first because if you don't know how to do that, how are you going to get your, your feet to the other side of the bike? So, we're going to start with that one. I'm going to come off with a little bit of rolling speed. You want to jump up off your pedals, kick your legs out, and land on your pedals safely. Keep doing that till you're comfortable with that because when you're doing it, your body weight's going to shift over a little bit over the front when you're doing it on the flat ground. And you want to keep your arms quite locked out, keep your elbows a little bit bent because your body weight's going to be resting all on your arms so your legs can come out, do the no foot and then land back on your pedals. But this is going to help you because it's going to know where your pedals are. When you jump in, you want to come back straight to those pedals. You don't want to come back somewhere else. You want to slap them back on those pedals. Keep doing that and we'll move on to the no foot can. Right, when you're doing the no foot, you don't want to be putting too much pressure on those pedals, jumping up and getting all your body weight over the front. You don't want to be doing that. Just think if you're on the floor and you want to do a big star jump, it's exactly the same amount of pressure that you would do on the ground but on your pedals, just to get your feet out. Now moving on to the no foot can. It's gonna feel a little bit alien, that's for sure, because your body weight's gonna be slightly over there if you haven't done it before. But you wanna keep your body weight quite central to the bike. So again, same amount of speed. And what this is gonna help you understand and get into your muscle memory on your legs is kicking your legs over to one side and back over. Keep doing that on the floor because when it comes to the jump, you'll understand, you your body will be like, right, that's enough for can, and back over. I'm going to do this here. It's going to feel a little bit weird at first for you guys, but trust me, keep doing it. Keep practicing this, and it'll be perfect when you get to the big jump. Right, it's all about timing when it comes to the no foot can. What I mean by this is, when you're jumping off those pedals, getting your body up into the air, you gotta know where this top tube is, and you gotta know where that saddle is. So you gotta jump, time it, kick your legs across, have enough time to get those feet back on those pedals. And the flat ground's a great way to try and, you know, perfect that skill. But now, you've done that a lot, you understand what's going on with the no foot can on the flat ground, let's move to the jump. So you've picked this jump because you're confident, you're comfortable with jumping it, you've got enough speed to jump it, you've been doing it for a while, and you want to do a no foot can on this beast, and you want to learn it. So I recommend just doing a few no footers. Just get used to your, your body weight in the air, let your legs flail out a bit, land on those pedals comfortably, do that a lot, just get used to it. Now you want to start doing the no foot can, and it's all about timing. Like when you're on the flat ground, you were pushing off the pedals to get your body weight above the bike to give you the knife it can to get back on those pedals. On the jump, you don't want to be pushing away from your bike because it's just going to affect you in the air and it's going to send you in a different direction. You're going to crash. What you want to do is let the lip do the work. This is natural. You want to naturally get your bike up into the air, let your feet float off the pedals Kick your legs up. Like I said, this is all about timing. Bend those knees, kick the no foot can, and get back onto those pedals. 
safely. But you don't have to go and do big ninja kick straight away. Just let your let your your foot just float over the top tube. And as long as it's on the other side, it's a no foot can. And then get back on. Then gradually get bigger and bigger and bigger. But it's all about practice, practice, practice. When practicing dirt jump tricks or any tricks in particular, you've got to have the right riding protection. For me, I like to wear full leg protection. So I'm starting with my ankles. I've got a perfect ankle protection there to stop my ankles from rolling when I put my foot down when a trick goes wrong. I've got some shin pads here, so when I do slip a pedal, it's going to hit these plastic bits here and it's going to stop the pins going into my leg because no one likes shinies. It's horrible and painful. Also, I've got these nice POC knee pads, so when I do have a big crash, put my knee down on the dirt, it's going to help me save my knees from all that impact. And a good pair of riding jeans because they're thick, they're strong, they're durable, and they look cool. They look steezy and stuff. Right, let's talk about your hips because it's one of the key factors when doing the no foot can because you want your hips to twist with your legs depending on which side you're going. That means it's going to keep your body weight quite central on the bike. If you don't use your hips and you're using your whole body to just kick your legs over, you'll find yourself all your body weight will be to one side of the bike and getting back over the bike again to land is going to be quite hard. You'll find yourself landing near the side of the bike. So if you are landing on the side of your bike, look at your hips, maybe twist your hips a bit more, keep your body weight a little bit more central to the bike. So you've been spending hours perfecting the no foot can, getting used to doing the no foot can, but now you want to make it a lot more. You want to let it hang out for a lot more time out there. But there's two things that you've got to take into consideration. That is time in the air and time perfecting this trick to get to that level. For me, it's taken me a hell of a long time to do the no foot can, especially from learning it. it. Took me a month or two of Sundays all day trying to perfect the no foot can, just from going from over the top tube to fully extending the no foot can. The next one is time in the air. You can actually do it on that little jump there, but it means you've got to go a little bit faster, you've got to go a little bit higher, so you've got more time to do that no foot can. For me, I just move it to a bigger jump. That's definitely given me a lot more time in the air to explode on that no foot can. But it just takes time. There's a few things you've got to take into consideration when you move to a bigger jump is, it's going to be bigger, it's going to be scarier, you're going to go a lot more faster, you're going to go higher, but don't worry, it's all about slowing down that trick, looking at where your body position is on that. Timing wise, you can slow it down, you can see where it's going wrong because you're more time in the air, whereas on the smaller one, it's all quite quick. You're going through, done. Done it, no foot can, done. And on the big one, slow it down. You can get huge no foot cans, but it all takes with practice a long time. Take me years. Watch this one. So that's the no foot can. Whew. Hopefully a few of these tips have helped you out perfect it if you're trying it or if you just want to start learning the no foot can. Whew. It just takes time. It's taken me years to perfect it to get to what it is like that. But just remember to have fun whilst learning it because that's what it's all about. If you want to see another rad video, if you're struggling on how to build a jump, click down here where I'll show you how to do that. Smash that globe if you haven't subscribed already because <laughs> you're missing out and we deliver. You ask, we deliver. You ask for the Nofa can, we gave it to you. Let me know in the comments down below if there's anything else that you want to learn, how to eat, or you want to see something else, let me know in the comments down below. Smash that glow, smash that like if you loved it. Share it with your mates if they need to learn the Nofa can. See you in the next one.